Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. We continue the discussion about what it means to be a good citizen and good citizenship. Today, our podcast is called Like a Good Neighbor. Now, hopefully, that triggers those in North America with a famous slogan of a company who will remain nameless. But I'm not here to promote them for free advertising, so that's why I'm not going to say their name. But what's important to know is, what does it mean to be a good neighbor? Throughout the scriptures, Jesus talks about loving our neighbor and being a good neighbor. So as a Christian, if I want to be a disciple of Christ, I must seek ways to be a good neighbor. Two days ago, we talked about speeding and how important it is to not speed for our own safety and to care for the safety of others. When we think of being a good neighbor, this doesn't just necessarily mean the person who lives next door to us, that we should be kind to them. To be a good neighbor starts with how we see ourselves. If I am a son or daughter of God, then I have a moral obligation to care for everybody in the world. Who are my brother and sister? Jesus answers that. Anyone who does the will of God. And then he says that those who are least in society, that's when you do things for God. So if we want to be a good neighbor, we need to be caring for everyone. Now, that doesn't mean that you could possibly do everything for everyone. And yet, that When we look at the core of who we are, there are many instances throughout the day in which we are being tested by God to see if we are willing to be a good neighbor. Holding the door for someone, saying good morning, smiling when somebody makes eye contact with us, letting them go ahead of us when we're standing in line, saying have a good day, being respectful to the clerk, saying thank you when somebody helps us. These are little ways in which we can be a good neighbor. This brings glory to God and helps us on the path to holiness. When we think of the street that we live on and being a good neighbor in a literal sense, how many of us know someone who lives close to us who might be like a Scrooge, a difficult person? While the rest of the street might mistreat them or ignore them or grunt at them as they grunt at us, God is calling us to be different. How can we perhaps kill them with kindness and flip them around? I think of movies like Pixar's Up, in which the old man turns from being very crotchety as he misses his now late wife to be so open by the young boy and his persistence to hang around him. Despite the annoyances at first, eventually their relationship blossoms. And this is what we are called to do as well. To think of ways in which, instead of just acknowledging the negativity in other, what can we do in ways to bring out Christ's presence in that person? The term killing with kindness helps us to be a good neighbor. In other words, two wrongs don't make a right. We should continue to say good morning, even though they may grunt at us or ignore us, pretending they didn't hear. Even though at times they might be on our property, etc. And for the once in a while we're on theirs when they scream at us. Let's not scream back at them or call the police. Let's seek ways to live harmoniously with the people around us. Think at church, in our pews, when there's a crying baby around us or an old person coughing or somebody who's perhaps being a little distracting. Let's not give them the look of death. Let's not make a smart aleck remark. 
or just by looking at them, give them a very condescending look or word or tone to our body language. Let's offer to help that parent that could use a third arm when gathering their children and their belongings. Let's ask the old person if they need something to drink or a cough candy as they are coughing. Let's remain focused at Mass, but not deter others from coming to worship God too. So let's be good neighbors in the pews. Let's be good neighbors to our pastors, who, you're right, they're not perfect. I know I'm not. I'm far from it. And yet at the same time, friends, God wants us to be respectful, just as our pastors need to be respectful to their people. And I'm reminded of this, too, in my own life. To be a good neighbor means to care for each other. When I'm walking down the street and see a homeless person or someone who is asking for money, let's not pretend they're a piece of garbage or walk past them and ignore them, even if you don't feel comfortable giving them something. Have a great day, good afternoon, or asking them their name. That's a way in which we can be a good neighbor. When we're out for lunch or entering a restaurant at some point of the day, are we willing to hold the door for someone, not just somebody older than us, someone our same age or even younger? To take a moment to recognize other people around us too, respecting them. This is what it means to be a good neighbor. What about the people that irritate us? Are we willing to lift them in prayer? That's one of the best ways in which we can be a good neighbor is spending time asking God to bless someone who irritates us. I don't know about you, I have a long list of people who irritate me. And I'm sure, sadly, I make the list of some people when they make their irritable people list, too. And yet, don't I rely on the prayers of these people? Don't I hope that even when I'm irritating to family, friends, the bishop, parishioners, fellow priests, and strangers that they might lift me in prayer, especially when I'm a hot mess. To be a good neighbor also means to spend time caring for those who may not, quote-unquote, deserve our love. Are we willing to be good neighbors to them? When I turn on the TV and see those commercials with the 1-800 hotlines of raising funds to produce for food and shelter and water for African children or whatever turmoil is going on globally. Do I recognize that that is my brother and sister in Christ? To be a good neighbor, to help them through development and peace or St. Vincent de Paul or giving globally to call these hotlines. Do I lift them in prayer asking God to help them to find food shelter and clean water, medical care, toys for kids, education for those seeking it, good jobs to look after their families. When I think of people in prison who perhaps made difficult choices in their lives, am I willing and able to recognize that that is my neighbor too? So when Jesus asks us to visit the sick, to visit those imprisoned, to care for the dying. These are all examples of people who are our neighbors, who are our brothers and sisters in Christ, who deserve our time, our affection, and our prayers. How is God calling us to be a good neighbor? In the jingle of the firm that uses this title and ties it into their logo, and motto. It presumes that the company is always there. May that be our response to friends, as Jesus calls us to be good neighbors to one another. So like a good neighbor, let's always be there for one another and to find God 
even in the very depth of our most despised person. Indeed, Christ is in them and is calling us to be a good neighbor to them. So let's pray for one another. Let's seek ways to act in love for one another and grow in holiness so the Lord will always look at us and feel that we are a good neighbor to all we meet. For God's Playbook friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.